Hey guys, we are live. It's another Tuesday at 3 uh, for our weekly live session. And the, the goal of the live session is to answer some questions on entrepreneurial topics, on business topics, on side hustle topics that you guys would like to know. Uh, answer these questions live where everybody can tune in from anywhere in the country and anywhere in the world and ask questions to me directly about these things and well, we always have a lot of questions on live sessions and recently we've had a lot of viewers as well it just grows exponentially so i love the live sessions on tuesday so this live session today we'll talk a bit about property investment and some of the tips and tools and some of the questions i get in terms of property investment uh, shalani thanks so much for joining in on the live session so if you guys have questions about property investment, or what to do, how it works, don't be afraid to ask uh, Beloved SA, thanks so much for joining in, and Pierre, thanks for joining in on the live session. If you have any questions, Michael, on property investment, send them through right now. Any questions you have in terms of how to buy a property, what do I do when I buy a property, what type of property should I try to buy, uh, why is property investment one of the best investment opportunities that you can make, um, you know, all of these things, if you have any question in terms of property investment, feel free to ask on the live session right now and we will answer those questions in a minute. But before we get there, a few announcements. Tomorrow I'm speaking at IASA in Witbank. Uh, to all the, it's the Institute for Estate Agents South Africa, so I'm going to speak there. And Thursday night, I'm speaking in Bryanston at the Epic, Epic Networking event. I'm keynote speaker there, so it's going to be awesome. And then next week, the 3rd of October, we have our How to Invest in Property seminar. So it's going to be great. So if you enjoy this live session, you get some info on the questions, make sure to attend the seminar for more info on that. Okay, uh, Beloved Isa is asking, what property investment is not an investment at all? Okay, <laughs> so there are different types of property investments. Um, normally buying property is awesome. Okay, it's great because it's a great asset that you can use for yourself or that you can rent out or that you can sell and most of the time property always increases in value except for the times like the 2008 fall where all of the property fell but generally property always increases in value and it also depends on what type of property you want to buy so if you're buying a property just to stay in yourself it becomes a liability because then it's a monthly expense right until you've paid it off only then it actually becomes an investment because then you can leverage on the growth of the property so you buy the property you pay it off it grows in value and then in a few years from now you can sell it again at a much higher price than you bought it okay that's a good property investment if you're just buying for yourself um, but then you can buy to let, so you can buy properties to rent them out. That's great property investment because you're actually generating income from that property. And then you can buy to flip. So you can buy properties, renovate them a bit and flip them and sell them at a higher price. So a property investment is always a good investment and there's different types. I'll talk a bit later on the different strategies in terms of property investment. You get cash flow positive properties you get um, where you rent from someone else just to rent it to to a tenant again or you get the the type of property investment that I do buy pay off and um, has it as an asset but we'll talk about that a bit later beloved they say Michael is asking is it better om een eiendom te koop vir een miljoen rand of is it better om twee te koop vir 500,000 rand elk? So Michael is asking, is it better to buy one property for a million or buy two for 500? Michael, if you can get great properties for a million, please call me <laughs> I'm in a good area. So uh, a million rand is, is uh, a very good entry level for a property. Uh, I would say rather buy full title property okay so I assume that your 500,000 properties are sectional title properties or small flats uh, in an area where you don't own the actual land okay 
a full title property gives you so much more leverage, it gives you so much more power, and it gives you so much more value. Okay, so if you can buy a full title property for a million rand, rather do that. A lot of my friends, I've told them, buy full title properties, okay? Buy properties where you own the land, where you have choice of what you do on there, where you have the power to, to you know, manage your asset, manage your investment as you would like to. And then most of the time, uh, young people, when they start to work, they buy these sectional title flats, these uh, new modern sectional title properties where you pay 500 or 800 um, for the property. But it's not your land, okay? So you can't build on it. It's fixed. It's done. It's, it's as it is there, right there. You can't increase that investment. Where if you buy something full title, like for example, my first property I bought, it was a three bedroom house. I changed that into a six bedroom house. And then at the back after a year or two, I built a two bedroom flat. Okay, and then when my business grew and we moved out of my garage, I built an office in the front of the property. So I've increased that property's value so much because I had the ability to build on, to make changes, to grow that investment. Michael, does that answer your question? If it does, send a shop on the live session. Beloved, they say if that answer your question, send a shop on the live session so I know I'm on the right track. If you have any more questions, Henku, thank you for joining in. Send some questions about property investment. What do you want to know about property investment? So let's get to the other question. What's the difference between cash flow properties and paying a property off, right? And letting it out. Because you hear some people saying, hey, I have 50 properties, okay? Or I have 30 properties. And then you have, hear other people saying, I have three properties. And if you look at their income, it looks like the guy that has three properties are making more money than the guy that has 30. How does that work? How does that even work? How, how can that be? Uh, Dominique, thank you so much for joining in. So the difference is, that you get cash flow positive properties, a cash flow positive property investment strategy, and then you get paying a property off um, strategy, paying it off first. So what happens is the first one is cash flow positive property strategy. So what these people do is they buy a property, right? Uh, by loaning money from the bank. So the bank uh, borrows them 800,000 Rand, they buy the property, their repayment to the bank is, let's say, 5,000 Rand. But now they're letting the property for 6,000. Okay? So they're only paying the bank back the 5,000 that's required. They don't pay the bank more than the mortgage. And then that 1,000 Rand that they have, they then use for their own cash flow. So because they can cover the the mortgage and they have a thousand rand extra their cash flow is a little bit higher so they tell the bank hey i'm getting an extra thousand rand a month now so can i buy another property and then they apply for another loan to buy the next property okay so then they buy another property that property's uh, mortgage payment is five thousand rand and they take they can uh, let it out for six thousand rand so they get an extra thousand rand now they make 2,000 Rand extra per month. So they go to the bank and tell the bank, hey, I'm earning 2,000 Rand extra a month. Can I buy another property, right? So they loan again and they buy another property, the third property. Also, the mortgage repayment is 5,000. They get an extra, they get 6,000 for the rent. So they have an extra 1,000. Now they have 3,000 Rand cash flow. Continue, continue, continue. So they keep on doing that, owning 30 properties. But they're only paying back the bank the mortgage amount. The, any extra income they get, they keep for themselves. So they're never actually paying off the bond, right? So they never actually owns, own the property. So they may have 30 properties, but how much are their net worth, right? How much do they have in assets? Not a lot, because they own, they owe the bank these properties they owe the bank all the uh, money on these properties so they don't actually own these properties they don't actually have a massive net worth and they only generate cash flow from it 
What's the bad thing about that? When 2008 comes, in 2008 there was a massive property market crash. If something like that happens again and the worth of the property decreases so that it becomes less than what they owe the bank for the property, then they have a problem. Because they're still owing the bank 800,000 for that property, but it can only be sold for 600,000. So they have a 200,000 gap there. That's, that's a problem. And then they sell the one to pay the other one. Now they have a 400,000 gap there. So, so that's a cash flow positive strategy. You can quickly, quickly get a lot of properties, 30, 50 properties, and you can quickly, quickly generate a lot of income without having nothing, right? Without having any income. You can work on the bank's money and you can quickly generate some cash flow and live a nice life with a lot of cash flow, but it's very risky and it doesn't give you a great net worth. Now the second option, we're going to talk about that just now. Um, Shalandri, beloved Michael, Henku, um, Dominique, uh, Berger, Lesier, and Reinhard Kotze, and Stein Mover. Thank you so much for joining in on the live session. We're talking a bit about property investment today, answering some questions. We've answered beloved Desai's question and Michael's question. They said shop. Thank you so much for answering the question. We're currently busy talking about two strategies, cash flow positive properties that a lot of people are doing. They have 30, 50 properties. And then the other option, paying a property off. So that's what I'm doing, right? When I buy a property, I put all of the rental income back into that property, right? I keep on putting my other businesses income back into that property until I paid off completely. Then I have a paid off asset, right? Then I have some net worth. And then I still keep on letting that property, renting it out and generating income from that property. Then I buy the next property. All of those, that rental income goes into the next property as well as the rental income from that property. Then that property gets paid off quicker. But I only buy the next property until it's fully paid off. Then I buy the next property. So that's a different strategy. It takes longer, but it's safer. And it actually gives you a net worth and it gives you a proper asset. Henku is asking, is it better to rent out your property or to build the property up and selling it. Uh, Henku, so that's different strategies, right? When you begin property investment, I'll say you can have one or two prep, uh, strategies. If you don't have a lot of capital and you want to gain quick capital, I'll say buy a property, renovate, sell. You generate quick income, quick capital. When I say quick, I mean in a year or in a year and a half, right? Or maybe nine months, six months if, you, if you're really good at what you're doing. But that's quick, right? Six months to a year, you can generate some capital, right? You can buy a property for a mill, you can renovate it, you can sell it for two more, okay? That's quick income. But then you also want to start buying properties that you rent out because you want a monthly capital, you know? You want a monthly passive income. So I started at this side. I bought a property, renovated it, started renting it out. So I just started generating monthly income. Then I bought another property, renovated it, started renting it out. So I did that a few times and now I have a great passive income that keeps me running. That also provides me with capital to now buy properties, renovate them and flip them. So I'm only getting into the flipping game right now. I've been buying properties, renting them out, generating cash flow for myself and passive income. Um, Reinhard Kurt Sustain Mover. Guys, if you want to know about property investment, ask some questions. Uh, ask it on the live session now. Henku, did that answer your question? If it did, send me a shop sign on the live session. Guys, um, Shalandri, beloved Michael, uh, Henku, Dominique, Berger, Lesia, Reinhardt and Stein. Are you guys enjoying this? Is this valuable? If it is, send some shops on the live session to, to, so that I know I'm on the right track. We have a question on Facebook. Hannes is asking, do you rent out your property or just buy, improve and sell? Okay, so it's almost similar to Henku's uh, question. I started with uh, buying a property, renovating it and then renting it out, right? To generate that cash flow and now I'm busy developing. So now I'm currently buying properties, uh, renovating them um, and developing 
and then flipping them so selling them again so buy and sell so it's very important uh, that you start with either the one or the other to if you need capital up front then start by flipping if you want to build constant cash flow so you can quit your job <laughs> start with buying and renting out okay that's what i did guys then another question where should i buy albert i want to get into property investment i see some good investments if they in Pretoria, I'm staying in Joburg, but I want to buy something nice. I see a good priced property there in Pretoria. Should I buy it? Or the other way around. I'm staying in Waverley and the Moet, and I see a good investment in Centurion. Should I buy it? My answer is no. Okay, don't. Don't buy where you don't know the neighborhood. Um, I only buy in Kilner Park, in Queenswood, in Waverley, because uh, I know this area. I was born here, I was born in the Muet Pretoria, I've been driving through these, these streets all my life, I know what's happening here. I know where the value are and where there's no value, right? For example, in Kilner Park, if you need to buy there, you'll, there's a stream going through the middle of Kilner Park, right? Um, and on the, other, on the one side of the stream, it's great, right? Great uh, soil, good for building, good for property. But on the other side of the stream, there's turf ground. I don't know what's that in English. Turf soil, okay? But if you stay in Centurion, or if you stay in Joburg, and you look at the property prices, you'll see, hey, Kilner Park, 1.5, 1.8 mil for a property. But here's a property for 800,000 Rand. You'll be like, that's a deal, right? So that's, go for it. The average price is 1,000, uh, 1 1.5 or 1.8, and here's a property for 800,000 Rand you're gonna buy it but you don't know about the turf soil on this side of the stream you don't know about the industrial area just across the highway on this side of the stream but I know because I know the neighborhood so I won't buy that 800,000 property and for me it's not a deal because I know what's happening in my area so before you buy make sure you know the area very well you know what's happening where the schools are where the malls are where the turf soil is where the highway is where the industrial areas are where the traffic is who's walking through there right um because you might look at a property a real estate agent will show you the property in the afternoon and you'll think hey this is great but then the next morning there's a massive you know traffic of industrial workers it's it's their route or their path through the neighborhood and they walk past there and that means that your property does not have a lot of value because uh, it's a lot of people going through there in the morning um, disturbing the neighbors etc but you won't know that if you don't know the area so very important know your area Stain is asking I'm in the USA and on the media it do not look good off uh, over there so do you think it's still a good idea to buy property Stain this is a very very uh, hard question at this stage a lot of people's asking this should I buy property now should I not what should I do um, it's a very uh, stressful question in South Africa especially we have a very difficult situation with the gov government in terms of land uh, claims um, taking your land without paying you for it um, but but I believe in being positive I believe in taking action right I believe that you should not let circumstances uh, dictate your success or stop you from doing something. Yes, know about these things. Be clever, you know, if, you know, calculate these things. But when I wanted to buy my first property, it was just after the 2008 crash, right? Everybody said, don't buy property. I bought it. When I wanted to buy my second property, it was just, they said South Africa's in a recession. So they said, don't buy property. I bought it when I wanted to buy my third property uh, the the government a parliament guy for finances has just been fired and the rand dropped with like two rand or something they said don't buy property I bought my property and all of them has been very profitable for me so I'm saying don't let something like this let you sit on the sidelines there'll never be a good time to buy property there will never be a perfect time to invest you just need to go for it and sometimes you win money, sometimes you lose money. And that's the thing with investment. Stain, if that answers your question, send a shop on the live session. So, on the live session, Shalandri, beloved say, Michael, 
uh, Henku, uh, Dominique, Berger, Lesia, Reinhard Kotze, Stein, and Van Vaikovis. Guys, I hope you're enjoying this live session so far. If you do, send a shop. If you have any more questions in terms of property investment, send them through right now on the live session. We answered a few questions today in terms of property investment, what you should do, where you should start, some things that you need to know about. If you want to know more, right? If you want to have more in-depth discussion, I'm gonna be available at the How to Invest in Property Seminar on the 3rd of October in Pretoria. So we're having it at Remax Info Globe. There's gonna be five, five property specialists there sharing on all of the different things you need to know about buying and investing in property. And then I'm gonna be the keynote speaker telling my story on property investment and what I've did. And then I'll also be available afterwards to ask questions to answer these things. So guys, if you want to know more about property investment and know where to start and how to do it, uh, the event's name is How to Invest in Property and it's gonna be in Pretoria. So check out my Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, thanks guys for the live session. I hope you've got some valuable information today to help you on your journey for property investment. Enjoy the rest of the week. This was the Tuesday live session at 3. See you next week.